Medium Red Cyclone! ¡Daria! Yes sir, yes sir. Welcome to another episode of the Make It Spinner Rice Whale Podcast. I'm your host, Louis Dean, and I'm here with Mark with the mic. What is going on, everybody? Chillin' chillin', Mark. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um I, I kinda you gotta kinda got my blood boiling with this Clone Wars talking. <laughs> it just pissed me off. <laughs> Clone saga. Um, so if you don't know about the Spider-Man clone saga, it came out like 95. Um, it was when they brought, I think the best thing out of the clone saga that happened was Scarlet Spider. I think that's my favorite thing out of it. And that's like barely anything. Cause I like, she liked the character of Spider, Scarlet Spider. Other than that. All right. So we were did talking you, about, did you like Ben Riley? I like Ben Riley. Like, before, before they changed the costume, when he was still Scarlet Spider, but was a reveal to be Ben Riley. Did you like him? Then? I liked Ben Riley. I liked the con- all right. okay. So I liked it. His all right. So okay. So we were talking about. So me and you before we started this cast. I guess we got into the gist of, of what something we're gonna talk about is the heroes reborn from Marvel. We just talked about um, that Miles Morales is being becoming Falcon in that storyline, which is a whole new storyline uh, coming out in May 2021, uh, I believe because that's what i would just read i could give you a little synopsis but then they made us think about other then you made a comment about if you didn't know something about a book you wouldn't have never read it and then i think there's some things that if i would have read if i would have known about it i probably would not have read it as well yeah yeah and that is going clone saga but um i'll give you a little synopsis of the 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 um the brand new the the new marvel stuff pretty much they bring bring back the um the heroes reborn storyline which they did part i think it was 1998 or 99 when i uh, want to say 99 because it was around the time marvel vs calcom was up that's all i remember because i remember uh jim lee doing fantastic four that was like my main reason why i got into it because jim lee was doing fantastic four i had i think i still have the issue number ones of those yeah. somewhere so with, that's with the that, big today like cat yeah, that weird side. Way. Was that Rob Liefeld? That yeah, you met? yeah, that's his, that's him. That's all him. Resident, uh, Red Cyclonic artist Rob yeah. Liefeld. <laughs> Big today, Big today, yeah. uh, Captain America. Such an odd perspective for that poor man. So, um, but what I was before we go into the synopsis is when you looked at the the when I saw the initial art for it. And then I saw Heroes Reborn. I thought, that's not good. I mean, the art looks good, but don't you call it that? Because that has bad connotations. Yeah. Because <laughs> from what I know, that was bad. That wasn't a good time. No, it wasn't as a good storyline. But then sometimes Marvel likes to come back with something and try to improve it. They try to do it with Age of the Apocalypse. They try to do it with... Um... They try to do it with Clone Wars again. <laughs> it was a success <laughs> one. <laughs> Okay, right. Well, uh, since we, we mentioned two, did you like the Age of Apocalypse? Because that is my number. I would say it was my number one of those types of things. Um, we're gonna alter everything and make a, a, a kind of long form story out of it. For me, I really really liked it. I think I have every, just about every issue of that that came okay. out before they started making the return back. Yeah. So did you like, like that? Like I'm already like kind of like not liking where they're going over Spider Man and that's my dude, so I'm just like uh, <laughs> true, 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 true. Making me grind my teeth and shit. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm looking at the picture of Heroes Reborn and uh it doesn't look good. Anyway, um so what were you saying? Sorry. No, I said did you like the the previous the uh 
tries like did you like age of apocalypse and when they the brought it back original. no because i feel no, the like original. The original. i like the original i did like the original it took me some time to get into it i actually probably had to read it so i probably read it maybe a good five years ago like i have not read it since then and that was the first time me fully getting into it and reading it and i really enjoyed it and i liked the writing i liked what they did and um so then when they brought it back they kind of like fucked up some storylines in it and it kind of bothered me so i never liked it when they were mm. trying to bring it back i never yeah i didn't get the read part two or whatever okay yeah okay. it was just like uh just re like it, it kind of just revisited it and it was just like the, the it, they kind of like put a lot of loopholes in the storylines and i just didn't like it um mm-hmm. there's a lot of storylines like that like there's there's some epic especially x-men x-men has some good stuff but Again, um, The Heroes Reborn was not that good when it first came out, but Marvel's next event, which is, uh, I think, starts in May. Heroes Reborn by Jason Aaron and Ed McGinnis. I like Ed McGinnis. I like Jason Aaron. I think that he's a good writer. I think Ed McGinnis is a good artist. Ed McGinnis uh, has his ways of art sometimes that it just very, looks very blocky and cartoony, but I don't mind it. it it's not bad, but everyone is like massive brolic. Um... It takes a bold step in an alternate timeline where the universe is much different from the normal uh, Earth 616. So it's going to be an alternate alternate universe kind of thing. I don't think it's going to take mm-hmm. over all the books. No, no, no. I don't think so. I was hoping that it's because I was like, yo, we got to do Spider-Man. Yeah. Think? That's, that's pretty smart. Don't do that. Yeah. So the Squadron Supreme are the par- protectors of the planet as uh, Avengers are never formed. Instead, Thor is a hard-drinking hammer, hating a th- atheist. Uh, Captain America was never unfrozen from ice. Tony Stark was never uh, trapped into a cave. And Wakanda is nothing more than a myth. Marvel's Superman Hyperion is leading the charge against numerous new threats, including Dr. Juggernaut and the Infinity Ring holding Thanos. While heroes and villains undergo drastic changes, Blade will be the only only person who remembers the original Marvel timeline. I, the one, the one thing that I think stands out from everything else that I really like is Doctor Juggernaut. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's ridiculous, and I like the way he looks. I really don't care about anything else. Just give me, do- give me a Doctor Juggernaut book. That's all yeah. I want. Peter Parker, the Amazing Stutterbug. Oh, what the fuck is that? I don't understand what they're doing. Why? Why? Why are they doing that? I think Osborne. That's his name. You said yeah. the Amazing Stutterbug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, Stutterbug. Stutter what is bug. that? Is that a real bug? Let me find out. Yeah, Doctor Doom Day actually looks pretty cool. He looks like uh, he has a crystal. I just love that. It looks so dumb and bulky. And I'm like, yeah. Yes, Dr. Juggernaut looks ridiculous. He should. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's coming out May. Um, I I I hope it's good. I hope it's be interesting. Um, I am not like really like I need to wait this. I can't wait for it. But nah. um, it is what it is. But it's new. Yeah, it, it is a new thing. So that's why I want to bring it up. Yeah. So we brought up like the Clone Saga, and that's our, how we started this cast. And um, I invested time and money into the Clone Saga when it first came out because I was collecting Spider-Man. That was my comic. And um, even though Spider-Man wasn't good, I still was collecting it. And they did the storyline of the Clone Saga. And I felt like, honestly, honestly, I honestly, I got turned off comics for a while because of that comic. Yeah, I, I was telling you after I finished collecting that from the beginning to the end. <laughs> I never wanted to read the Spider-Man comic again. Yeah. And I just stopped. I just stopped reading them. It was just, nope. No, thank you. So I I stopped. I stopped. I stopped. uh, Honestly, I stopped uh, buying and reading Spider-Man comics all the way up to when J. Michael Szynski started writing Spider-Man. I mean, so that was was maybe almost 10 years. No, no, probably like six years, seven years. Okay. Okay. I, I like I'll, I'll read I'll look at things here and there, but I never actually like p- I stopped picking up books. And then I got myself back into comics and stuff like that. And then when he started writing uh, Spider Man, I liked the, the direction he was going with. Um, John Romita Jr. was doing the art. He was writing, and he did some weird storylines that I was actually really enjoying. And that's when I got back into Spider Man. But um, before then, it was hard for me to get it, pick a book up, especially once they did the Ben. Uh, 
they did the whole clones, and then uh, Parker was the real, he's the fake one, and Ben Riley's the real one, and all that shit. I, I feel the story really did wrong in so many ways. And it's sad because the one thing I got out of it that I really enjoyed was Scarlet Spider. Other than that, like I felt that storyline was terrible. You know what was interesting for me was I actually liked Kane. Kane was ended up becoming the others, yeah. the, the other Scarlet Spider later on. Kane was an interesting character, but in that storyline in general, it was he was a pretty annoying character. Yeah. When he, he came in later on, I think he started developing character, especially when he became the second Scarlet Spider. I started liking him more as well, but when he was that character during that time, I was like, "Fuck that guy." He just looked like a brooding. He almost looked like Nightmare. Yeah, he did. He did. That's probably why I didn't he like did. him either. Ah, yeah, just a <laughs> bunch of not good stuff. But so you said you started collecting Spider-Man, then I didn't start until Superior Spider-Man. Yeah, like the time between that that series of comic books and superior spider-man is, is the entire length that i was like i'm kind of good with spider-man I'm, yeah I, I would i would look at stuff if if Jabstar had something yeah every once in a while but for the most part because he was a wolverine guy yeah i would just read x-men anyway and so that that's more what i would see by yeah. osmosis yeah you know what I mean? But yeah. the, even then, I didn't even collect X Men during the period when they changed Beast into that Beast Man. Yeah. Like that whole period when they kept changing the outfits and changing the suits to look like the movie people on different occasions. I was already out of that by then. I was like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, like the only thing that kept me really in was Wizard. Wizard? Okay. That was about the only connection I had at like for a good long time until they, st- yeah, until they stopped that. Yeah. Um, and I think I want to say, like, around the first time I started reading, reading stuff was like when Red Hulk first came, first came out. Yeah. That was before Superior Spider-Man. That was a good. That was a good while before that. So. Yeah. I remember seeing that. Um. I I hope this is cool, because I think it looks less like the the original Heroes Reborn and looks more like the Amalgam stuff, which was very short didn't overstay his welcome and even if it wasn't that good it, the the art was the thing that drew me in yeah so hopefully this has that going for it maybe it'll be good hopefully hopefully, hopefully. but fingers crossed you know what i mean i don't yeah. want to wish it that, so. yeah i loved um knowing i i love superior spider-man that was a really good one um when dan when dan slot start took over at with spider-man i think that's when I started getting my love back for Spider-Man too because I loved the storylines he was writing. This is when Spider-Man became like a, a, a almost a weekly book for a while. Okay. And uh, okay. Dan Slotts wrote like every three he wrote and then he had some other person do the art and then every three he wrote and everything like that. But it was very interesting. It got really, uh, it got really cool. He added more new characters like Negative Man became a character and he's a big thing in the video game now. And um he debuted a lot of new characters he debuted a lot of new things and stuff like that it was actually a really good run and that's who wrote uh superior spider-man so how do you recommend uh dan slot's spider-man um again he wrote the superior spider-man and he had a really good run with spider-man so definitely check his stuff out yes oh thank thankfully that he he did do a really good job because like i told you mark listen to just ask the synopsis for this stuff yeah, kind of makes you groan. Most yeah, of, if you, most of the premises for the storylines pre uh, Superior and yeah. up to Superior for Spider Man kind of made me like, nah, man, I'm good. Yeah, the the, the island of Spider People, I, I didn't read it, so I don't know how good it was, but the premise made me go, what? Yeah, and, and it had good. to do with Jackal. Like, oh lord, jeez, all right. Yeah, it had that, to do that, with Jackal. <laughs> That probably would have gave me some PTSD, man. Come on, you can't do that to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then me the else. other one, the other one was, I said the the brand new day thing that I I only heard through through the grapevine that it made some decisions at the end of 
Was that at the end or in the middle of that you said? So that the, people off. So the other one that was the first storyline that built into that, and that was the other okay. when Spider Man died and then he became more of a spider. And then uh he started getting like organic webbing and all that shit and they did that for a while. And then um I remember why I didn't like it because it was like, oh man, they're taking the movie stuff. I don't really like Spider Man. Yeah. Um, and then they did that. Then they did uh, One More Day, which is a storyline that Mephesto pretty much uh, deleted his, deleted everyone's memory. Because so I'm eight. So, okay. Leading into this was really good. You had the, the storyline with Civil War and um, him outing himself as Spider Man and stuff like that. Then you have uh, Kingpin hiring a, like a hitman to kill well he was supposed to kill mary jane but he ended up killing aunt may okay so they both agreed to get to agreed made a deal for miss mephesto to bring back aunt may but they but him and mary jane were never together or something like that which really bothered me because yeah i like i understand aunt may and love you and all that stuff but yo she's like 60 70 years old and y'all young and she's old and shit like that so bring her back it's kind of like oh why why you did that yeah you right uh, it's kind of fucked up but yeah but but okay so the the storyline going into that like when because spider-man i think brought back the the black suit and then um when he found out king there was kingpin behind uh aunt may's shooting he went to the jail and beat the living shit out of kingpin like (laughs) The, so like the storyline going into this was good it was it was consistent it was good it was just that one storyline the one more day that that, that those, those three books was bad okay okay all right but so that's yo, the thing. yeah i i will recommend honestly i will even send you the pictures of it so um i gotta find out the number but pretty much it was when he was meant to, it was called back and back and black so he used to wearing the black suit again because he was like done he was pissed so he came back see he wears he wore that suit as a statement he didn't wear the suit like that so that was the reason why he went back to the black he was in that mentality so what he said to kingpin was um he came in that spider-man and he stepped up to kingpin and he looked at him and he took the mask off and he said, "Is not Spider Man gonna kick your ass right now? It's, it's it's me. It's gonna be Peter Parker." So he pretty much beat the living shit out of him. He beat him in front of every single jail person, that person in jail, and then he puts his um the web the web shooter in his mouth, and he says, "If I actually pull this, I could make your brain explode." So if Aunt May dies, I'm coming back for you. And then he left. And then and uh. So- so how did he not have her die this was post making the deal so when yeah so this is post making a deal so when she was about to croak so patient when she was in like that uh mary jane and um mary jane and Peter parker was like having a conversation and trying to like figure out what they're gonna do and all that shit and then um mephesto came with the deal and it was like yeah i could have her alive but it's gonna sacrifice your relationship okay Gotcha. And that's pretty much what I did. Uh, short story short. Brand new day. We started it. Dan Slots took over. And it was it got really good. It kind of just brought back Parker into the reality of just doing everything. Um, brought back a lot of like side characters that haven't been on the book in a long time. Uh, Harry's his buddy again. He started running like a Starbucks chain and things like that. So he's always in a coffee house and whatnot. And there was a lot of things they did that was really good. And that was also led into Superior Spider-Man. It led to... Um, the spider island which was crazy but they it led to superior spider-man and led into um the the dark avengers it led into a lot of those storylines so there's a lot of good stuff off of that but the clone wars sucked yes 100%. and tainted a lot of things for the bad let's just i just want to put that out there it's yeah terrible. yeah it is but it had to happen for people to learn don't yeah. do that again yeah when they do it again, you know what's gonna happen. Yeah, um, don't do it again. That's something that yeah, yeah. Try to yeah, uh, try to bring that back and try to correct it. Just let it die. Just let it die. Remember, remember Spider Side. Yeah. Do you remember Spider Side, the character? Spider Side. No. The big like he could kind of shape shift, and he had a mouth. He looked like Deadpool with a mouth. Okay. He was really big and buff. Yeah. And he had like those really annoying, like those, 
I don't know what they're from. Like his boots were like sentinel feet. Oh, okay. I think it was. It was so weird. What the hell was you know? I, nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Uh-oh. The best thing that ever come out of that, I, I will just say, was Kane as superior as that, not superior as um, Scarlet Spider. Yeah. That costume, probably the best Spider Man costume. Yeah. In my opinion, up there with the original Scarlet Spider, but that second one, that black and red joint, damn. Yeah, I like that one. It's I, pretty that good. one's a cool suit. And that's when he was trying to kill people, too. What? Why do they always gotta give the killer a cool suit? Come on, man. Yeah, Kane was trying to like murder people. Like, Kane kind of was like the Wolverine of Spider Man. He was very angry. <laughs> Damn. I mean, yeah, well. So, do you, okay, but do you know, just before we get off this topic, did, was, was it the same thing with him? Because my memory was that he was the one that was the failed experiment. He had a mark on his face and everything. Yes, he was. And so they kept that, right? So he was, he was the first it. clone, yeah. He was, yeah. Okay. He, yeah, he was the first clone. He, like, he was the first one. He was the first one to debut. Um, back in the 80s when they first started like putting little things into it um, with, when they first introduced the Jackal he made a Parker and Gwen Stacy mm-hmm. and those are that's Kane that was the first clone and then yeah, that's that goes into that yeah. but he was an imperfect clone and his face had like a just, I don't know what that was like a burn mark or just a veins in his face that didn't form properly yeah like if you know if he was in if he was in junior high they'd make fun of him Yep. 100%. Not today. You get suspended, but I'm just saying, back in the day, you make fun of that kid. You're like, damn, that ain't right. But anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah. No bueno. No. You got to say it. About it. Once again, we probably talked about it before and said it was bad. We got to yeah. say it again. Yeah. Bad. Fuck the Clone Wars. Terrible. Not right. Clone Wars. <laughs> That's something completely different. Fuck that, too. <laughs> well, look, I thought that cartoon was good. The cartoon is good. The, the movie sucked. Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck clone sagas. Yeah, clone clone sagas. Part. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, before we go into anything else, I just wanted to say R.I.P. the Google Stadia Studios. Uh, the service itself is still around, but if you thought they were continu- going to continue making video games themselves, you was wrong. <laughs> if you're playing the Google Shut This Down drinking game, you're probably already dead but take another shot um i hope they don't shut it down i hope they can you know maintain whatever they're doing with it and find a way to make it more appealing to a lot of people because the my thing is the 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 technology especially because this one is not proprietary it's not microsoft because you know microsoft has their own version of things like this coming down the pipe with the, the streaming and all that stuff that's supposed to be happening later right yeah so but i i do hope that there are probably competitors in the space so there's no monopoly you know what i mean yeah um which you know makes hopefully makes makes both of them better um and like i like i heard before this people people actually play games in steady because it's not bad like as a service it's not bad it's I hear it's on. They nope. ran a better cyberpunk than most. Yeah, that was a thing. That was a real thing. They yeah. ran the game cyberpunk better than just about anywhere else. So there was that, right? But I hear a lot of people who play Destiny uh, prefer to play the Stadia version for certain things. Uh, that's interesting to me. Um, and there's like other pockets of uh, communities that play certain games that just played on Stadia. I heard MK11 has a really good online for Stadia. Nice, it's crazy. So, they should. They really should. Um, this is, but still, it's unfortunate to hear them shutting down the studios. It's probably just because it's hard as hell to make games. Yeah, expensive. And yeah. and Google just, they probably thought, oh yeah, we got all this money and access to technology. Of course, it's gonna work. Uh, that's the and you know not realizing that's not at all how it works you gotta have not just the talent but this is like what three i think it's three years which is kind of interesting and damn stadia has been around three years okay wow no, two, no, two, two, years, two years yeah i'm like nah <laughs> that's too long <laughs> but which which kind of makes it even more sad because it's yeah. like two years um but the thing is 
you kind of got to stick it out for the long haul. You can't just be like, we're going to make billions of dollars in two years. Nah. Nah. And I think that's the curse of the Google. If you don't come out the gates as a, a runaway success, it's like, mm, we're going to take you out in the back and shoot you in the head one of these days. Yeah. <laughs> but they still ain't kill hangouts. They just turn it into something else. Yeah. So you know what? Hey, You're still hoping. Adapting. <laughs> we've been we've been evolving yeah we've been so. adapting to whatever it goes <laughs> anyway uh yeah uh, at least as long as it has its communities and everything like that but for them to actually make first party games and stuff like that i think that's gonna hurt people's pr- and i don't even think so either because if it's an easy way to just grab something and cheap way to play i could see people doing that more than buying a 500 dollars console that you can't find anywhere okay Okay, somebody pointed out, um, I was this was on the Giant Beast cast, like the Giant Bomb Second podcast on Friday. Yeah. Um, and one of the guys there said, and he made this this very interesting point. And you know what? To be perfectly honest, if they had the support and the games, somebody like Austin Creed uh, slash Xavier Woods when he was traveling and stuff. Yeah. What he what the guy has said about Stadia. And traveling was really cool. He said all he needed to travel and have basically have access to his library was a Chromecast. Yeah. Meaning he could just be in any hotel room, have their internet, and it was good. And he was good to go. Meaning you don't have to lug around a system. Meaning you don't have to lug around discs if you're, you're so inclined to. And it's just like for for certain things it sounds like yeah for the portability of it for the the not having to buy a, a console yes that should be a viable alternative yeah. but we'll see we'll see yeah, hopefully we'll see. They don't just dump it dump out the baby with the bath water you don't do that don't no, do that don't do that so but um yeah see as long as it has a community and whatnot though but it looks like it sounds like a good thing but it didn't execute it when it said it didn't execute the things it said it was gonna do when it first came out. So that usually got put, that usually puts a bad That's true. thing in someone's mouth too. It's like uh, so like, we're supposed uh, to have I, this. We'll have that, yeah, huh? I can't trust you. It's like yeah, I can't trust you. Yeah. yeah, and that's what it did. Like it was supposed to have a bunch of things starting at one, and then all of a sudden, like oh, there's no online play, there's no this, there's no that. And then it's like, oh, I thought all this was supposed to be here when I bought it for the first time. And then you have people backing it, too. It was not like these guys were, like, put their money already to back it. And then you guys just took a half the shit that they wanted off of it. That's true. That's true. So th- that, 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 doesn't look, that, that doesn't make you look good when you do not shit like that. Not at all. And then just you have the reputation for shutting down projects. Yeah. They already did. So... Yep. So that 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 honestly, I, I'll say they did it to himself in that sense. Yeah, I mean, but it also they just didn't. I wonder how much money they were bleeding that they had to shut it down because, again, like I said, uh, you can't expect you. It's only two years in. You can't yeah. expect massive global success in two years. No. Like, what are you doing? It's 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 ridiculous. Like. It, I guess, like, depending on what they really was trying to get at it, but I, I think, again, like I said, they failed in, in the things they were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So I, I hope it doesn't just, you know, dissolve and go away. If it gets, like, turned into something else and becomes better, I, that I would like because the technology behind it is still new. Yeah. So not everybody, you know, Sony's not up on the game yet. They're not on that level. Because even if you talk about levels of how it works, it's still better than Sony streaming stuff. So, again, if you can get it to a, a level where you can have an a- the access, the games, the and something, some some type of incentive to do this over Xbox stuff, like yeah. that's what you want. You yeah, want and to then be able to look at something else. And then Xbox is doing pretty good with theirs. So it's like, yep. yeah, you got to get something very similar, but kind of work better. Yeah, you got to get people to want to go there, basically. Yeah. So. Yeah, but like we'll it, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Because uh, honestly, I it, like the way that um, Xbox is playing the X Cloud and shit like that. It's kind of the same thing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah they have they have their yeah. own thing, but it's a, the 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 good thing it always is to have more than one person doing the same thing. Yeah, because there's variety number one, but 
when you if you get that neck and neck, then then you go Microsoft's gonna come up with some way to make their servers better. Yeah. And then in return, so will Google, and then you'll base you'll basically be sitting there winning while those two these two people are trying to innovate, and that's that's what you want. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, because right now, like, also the next gen, most of the systems you can't even get in the store or in, in that sense. So basically, any, every, and also everyone's looking for a cheaper alternative as well. True. So like, some people just want to just pick up something just to play. They don't give a fuck what it is as long as I can play my game on there. That's all that matters. You know what's interesting? We mentioned this now, but last year could have been the year of Stadia because if they had went full force into putting some type of promotion out and getting some reason to entice a ton of people they could have picked up the slack on sony yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. and you know it's funny because um i listened to uh kind of funny games and shit like that and i think mm-hmm. i think it was tim that said the same exact shit like you know they could have easily took advantage of the market especially with the playstation being as little as the systems is there and things like that that you could easily capitalize on this if everything worked perfectly Yes. And not yeah. even perfectly. Everything worked. Good. Just good. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't have to be perfect. It just worked good. And I think you would have capitalized on it. Especially the fact that you were only charging like $300 for like the meat base shit. And, I then, know. and things like that. I know. And the controller, that's not better than the standard controllers that you can get for like, what was that, at the time, 50, 60 maybe? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So. Yeah. It is I is. hope it doesn't go away anytime soon. I, I hope it gets I, I, I hope good for everyone, I guess. Um, so what you got, Mark? You got some- um, Super Bowls today. So we got yes, some sir, sir. trailers to look forward to with Suicide Squad and uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. Uh, no I mean, cares about the game. I've, I've been hearing <laughs> about, um, what is it, WandaVision? And then people have been oh, digging that show. That show been fucking great. So, that uh, that only means hey, there's more expectation for more Marvel shows and yeah. What you what you think about that that particular one, Falcon and um, Winter Soldier? I've been look. I actually all right. So the one I'm looking like the one I have the most hype for is more than is the animated show What If. That's the one I'm like really like. Oh, oh okay. I can't wait okay. for that one. But I think I think Falcon Winter Soldier could be really good if done correctly. Um, mm-hmm. it has a lot of, it has a lot of stuff to, to, that it could do with what it has. Um, the Baron, Baron Zemo being the main villain and is the same actor in Winter Sol in the, what's it, not Winter Soldier, a Civil War movie. And, mm-hmm. um, him, he's a good actor and having him play that character, I think is going to be fun. It could be a really good thing. Um, uh, then you have, uh, a U.S. agent character and then you have, uh, they're bringing someone playing U.S. agent and things like that. So they, they're playing around with that, which I actually kind of dig. Um, I actually like uh, to see what they do with the Winters, uh, with um, U.S. agent and how they bring him in. Okay. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun show. Uh, that one starts in March, I think. Gotcha. So, so they had to. Oh, my fault. What did you say? Hmm? No, I said it's pretty soon. Yeah. So they had to, they had to do this before black widow because i think black widow has connections to this show all right all right so i think you see certain things that happen and then i, I don't know because then again black widow no black widow is supposed to be the movie's supposed to take place after the snap i think after the snap I, i'm not sure so we'll see we'll see because there's a lot of confusion and a lot of crazy shit going on in the marvel universe right. but one of has been fantastic um if you haven't been watching it's a really weird but really good show. Um, definitely check it out. It's, it's just it's just crazy. Um, I look forward to it every Friday. Me and Jackie watch it. That's our thing on Fridays. Uh, we look forward to is watching WandaVision. So, um, yeah. So, next Friday, that'll be episode six. It's like, th- uh, I think, three more left. Okay, cool. cool. But uh, they bring back ca- some characters from other movies. Uh, the, the guy from... Uh, one of the guys from Ant-Man 2... And then they bring Kat Dennings that was in Thor. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's one of the main characters in that show. So it's, it's, it's really good. It's really fun. It's a really fun show. I recommend. I don't want to spoil it because the, anything I say kind of will spoil it. So I kind of want everyone to just watch it and 
get spoiled on your own. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's good. Right. It's, it's better time. than Stadia. It's, not <laughs> <laughs> it's better than Stadia, for that matter. Good. Cool. Um, before we go into the movie, I know you had some figure stuff from earlier, but uh, yeah. just wanted to shout them out. The wrestling figures. Yeah, we got a lot of ringside collectibles uh, coming out. Um, they announced the WWE Elite 86 and then also AEW Wave 5 of their unhinged figures and shit. Everything looks pretty good. If you're a big wrestling collector, there's, there's always something new for you to collect. Sometimes I feel like they over crowd it and I, I have I can't I can't, I can't catch up <laughs> so no yeah no it's, it's just way too uh, look, I, uh, I go I'm on the wrestling the, the major wrestling figure podcast like their Facebook page and stuff because I'm a patreon and I'm looking at these dudes buying shit every fucking day I'm like Yo, where the fuck you do to make all this money to buy shit like I wish I could buy that much <laughs> like mm-hmm. where's your bills <laughs> true that but who knows? Like I don't know. There's probably a lot of drug dealers on that site. I don't know. Just joking. Just joking. <laughs> Just joking. Just joking. But yeah, there's, a, there's there's so much shit that comes out, especially through WWE. They they come out with at least like every freaking month, and then Ringside gets it first, but it it's just way too much. And then and then you're having Super Seven making wrestling figures now with uh, New Japan and the uh, Broskis and the um. The, the, the good brothers and stuff like that and they, i heard that there's uh, two more people that might be getting wrestling figures soon so stay tuned for that because uh super seven might be doing two classic wrestlers nice nice they've done andre the giant already so well one of those probably gonna be hogan right uh hope not not during black history month <laughs> i don't think it'll be hogan because hogan has a a deal with wwe all right, all right. So, so who are you thinking? I don't who, think he's your could. speculation. Um, with the model, honestly, my dream, my dream person that I wish they would do is Hayabusa. Okay. And Ultimo Dragon. Oh yeah, yeah. I would like Ultimo Dragon. I have a feeling Storm Storm Collectibles, the one that did the Justin Liger, is going to do an Ultimo Dragon. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So that'd be cool. You're right. You're yeah. right. There's so much. Yeah, you just made me think about that, man. Damn, the uh, Ultimo Dragon. He yeah. has not gotten a, enough respect on his name post being retired. You know what I mean? Yeah. That dude is a legitimate legend. And yeah. he should have figures from every company all over the world. Because he was also, not to steal the, the Broski's term, but he is toyetic as hell. Man. Yeah. It's funny because uh, that's something that I think Brian Myers and Trendoto talked about too because they got the Mexican figures uh, of those guys and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, are they good? Are they like? Would you pick up one of those me- the Mexican figures if they have? I had them out. Um, I saw them. They're not really my cup of tea with how okay. they like what they look like and shit. Gotcha. So gotcha. I I won't get them. They're too. They look too bootleg for me in that sense. Okay. Okay. But they're not like, like like scaled like the like the storm collectibles like Super Seven and stuff like that. And that's the kind of stuff I want. I want them to be like look like the, the actual wrestler and stuff. So. Gotcha. All right. Cool beans. Yeah. Um. And with that said, let's get into this here verdict of Supergirl from 1984. 1984. Uh, I was. We were one years old. The movie is rated PG, uh, two hours and four minutes, and it was released in the USA uh, November 21st. So this is like a pre-Thanksgiving movie. Yeah. So I imagine a lot of people were just disappointed. <laughs> and again, <laughs> and again, uh, going back at it, having watched it, it's not bad. It's just a half an hour too long it's kind of like a lot of the, a lot of what we see on these these superhero movies they're just too damn long too yeah. damn long and too damn dry you know what i mean um this was definitely going for the female demographic because it was basically like a love story 
the, yeah. the evil wicked witch literally tried to steal the handsome repair man and yeah. then he fell in love with he fell in love with supergirl like the, come on man oh he fell in love with supergirl's alter ego excuse me just but, like lois fell in love with, oh no she fell in love with superman <laughs> she didn't she tolerated clark <laughs> Well, she wasn't hit with a spell like yeah. that dude was. He drank that beer or whatever she gave him. He was, he was effed up. <laughs> dude was wandering the streets and she sent the uh, uh, excavator after him. Like, come on, man. Well, you can't just be sending construction equipment after people in Smallville. How dare you? No, that's not a girl. <laughs> uh, um, it had his own like theme that I didn't really care for. The music, I didn't care for the music. I didn't really hear the music, so that, yeah. that escaped. <laughs> so like every time she flew, they she had her, like she's like just like uh, Clark Kent and like Superman. Oh, like, she he, had he a had, Superman. Yeah, she had no, a thing. I, I didn't care for the. You know what? It was forgettable because I don't remember it. Oh man. Um. So let's see. In, I guess they have it in order of importance. Of the cast, Faye Dunaway played Selena. Yeah. I believe that's the evil witch, right? Yeah. Um, Helen Slater played Supergirl slash Linda Lee. That's the alter ego. Yeah. Uh, Peter O'Toole played Zoltar. Uh, Mia Farrow played Allura. I believe that's her mother, right? Mia Farrow, yes. The mother. Okay. Um, Brenda Vaccaro played the sidekick Bianca. I know that. And I think the le is it no Peter Cook is, as Nigel was the boyfriend. Yeah. And Simon Ward, I just want to put him in there as, as Zorel, because he was a major character. Yeah. And reprising his role as Jimmy Olsen, and also connecting this directly to Superman, is Mark McClure as Jimmy Olsen. I wish Superman was actually in this movie. Yeah. yeah. They, but they, they, as much as they talked about him, they, they, the radio in the beginning, I noticed, was setting up him being away. Yeah, they were like he's a peace summit, and he's so and so light years away. I'm like, what? There's already a league of whatever. Where's he at in space? That they need a peace. <laughs> right. How yeah. dare you? Scott yeah. Connor doesn't want peace. Yeah, I, I wish they. I, I at least like in the end, they should at least flew together and shit like that because she used her, she name dropped his name all the damn time, and that kind of bothered me. She made sure to let you know that she was his cousin. Yeah. Constant. Every Constant. single time. Every single time she is. I'm the cousin. I'm the cousin. I'm the cousin. Um, but I wish. I wish that. I think that was something that was missing from the movie. It was the reaction uh, interaction with Christopher Reeves and her. I think that was a missed opportunity with this. Yeah, me too. I wonder why not. Like just a throwaway scene. Yeah, why. especially if you're trying to make this. Uh, well, I, I again, I I didn't care for this movie like that much. Like there was things that I didn't mind. I th I thought it was better than what I remember it being. It was dry. It was boring a little bit, but I I see what they were doing, um, especially because I, I I like the character Supergirl, especially in the comics. I do like her in the the TV show as well, which um, Supergirl uh, Helen Slater plays her mother in uh, the TV show. Which there's a little shot okay. out there, um, so she she comes in. Uh, she also put, she's also in Smallville for sh for for something as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, to to just. Um, they, they they focused on I think they focused less on the Supergirl and more on the love life of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it felt like this was a romance novel. This felt like one of yeah. those, those thick books you pick up in one of the yeah. <laughs> supermarket with the the dude with his shirt ripped and the lady Fabio <laughs> on the side. Can't believe but, it's not butter. But it but it was just weird that maybe it's just more it's less weird and it's more of the time. Yeah, because they had the. It's interesting that it had the trope of the evil older woman jealous of the of the young girl over the affections of a man who doesn't really give a damn about either one of them, but he got tricked into falling in love with one of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's 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 stupid. Um, but I will say I didn't I didn't know nothing of this movie because I I probably saw like a second of it when I was young. It was yeah. just again eighty four and it wasn't that popular so. It, it wasn't heavily in rotation yeah so the one thing i will say a lot of the stuff they do connect it they have um 
with one more person, uh, Maureen Tifi as Lucy Lane. Yeah. So they did have the major thread being that um, Supergirl's character, like she kind of screwed up the planet and yeah. doomed everybody to death um, by playing with the power supply that I believe it was Zor. No, it was Zoltar that he stole. That he he stole it. <laughs> he said he borrowed it, but he stole it. He stole that. Where were they? They were like in a, a station in in a place called inner space. Yeah, that's that's the one thing I know. Like they they survive by being somewhere called inner space, and it looked like it wasn't a planet. It was like a, a maybe a small space station they lived in that was protected from the, the environments by something. And one of the power supplies he took and was giving a, a some story about how powerful that is and creation and this and that. And then he, when her mother showed up to talk to him, he gave it to her. Like he did the whole thing. He threw it, put it on the floor, rolled it to her. And was like, okay, here, go play with it. Cause she used his wand to make a dragonfly. Yeah. And then she used the power supply to make dragonfly come to life. Actually, it wasn't a dragonfly. It was like a giant colorful mosquito, which was like, that's disgusting. And I hate you. I hate you. I can't, say, I can't stand mosquitoes. It was phallic looking. No, but did you hear the sound it was making? Yeah. It was like a mosquito. And I was yeah. like, you just made a giant mosquito. That's <laughs> disgusting and terrifying. How dare you? Yeah. Um, but then she ends up botching it and it falls out. Of, and she makes a hole in the, in the, in the space station and the, and the ball gets sucked out. Yeah. And I'm just like, so basically she she killed the, the remnants, I guess, of Krypton. Yep. Like, that's terrible. So she that's fucked disturbing. Up Krypton. That's disturbing. Um, so there's that fact. So then she, I guess, I guess she felt bad. They, they never actually showed her showing any remorse. <laughs> she just immediately she like, Oops. <laughs> sneaked her way over to his pod, which he said he was going to use to escape, and not escape to to leave inner space to go into outer space. So what her thing, her thing was, I guess she didn't say shit. She just did it. She got in the pod and she went on a mission to get the power source back. Yeah. But at the same time, you hear that Zoltar was going to be doomed to being put inside of the negative zone for what had happened. Yeah. So that's how he survived. Um, and it's kind of a plot point, a big plot point later because she ends up in there. Um, but they tie it up to Smallville where the the power supply falls on earth conveniently and non-destructively like in a, in a cup of gelato or something <laughs> as, the, as the evil the evil lead is like talking with her boyfriend uh nigel and yeah. you can tell like they they waste no time and let you know that she's a witch so like they set up everything right away i don't know super supergirl's original villain so maybe she was a a nod to an original villain i don't know I can't um, tell you. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Uh, it seems like something that would happen, like a, a evil witch yeah. would try to steal Supergirl's power or be jealous of her or something like that. It makes sense in that type of world, but I think there's too many convenient things happening. Because as soon as that happens, the girl, the, the evil witch lady gets the power supply. She notices, oh, she could kind of do stuff with it, and then it powers her car. <laughs> and so when she notices that, she just decides whole cloth to to cut off the relationship with her boyfriend of like a few months and they discuss it yeah. and i'm just like all right well she's just proving to be more and more just evil and heartless all right um but conveniently that thing didn't kill her from space radiation you know what i mean she didn't just die of cancer yeah. and it wasn't hot from falling from space yeah into her her gelato like this is a lot of things <laughs> it's, making me upset. it's making me upset but anyway that's yeah. how you hear superman is away on space in space yeah via the right so like Peace they, they, they lay foundation early they really do lay foundation early and i at least got to give them credit for that but again the plot of the movie is basically like old older woman jealous a younger woman tries to kill a younger woman to steal this man that he was just trying to fix something, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, like, 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 what the hell? She was super horned up for that dude. And he was really just like, yeah, nah, I'm just trying to fix stuff. <laughs> I just want to go home when I'm yeah. done. Like, 
It was so messed up and, and reverse creepy. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was kind of weird in that sense. So, and then again, I said how 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 creepy it was that the guy fell in love with Supergirl's character, and it's like if you didn't really pay attention to the fact that they were college age, you'd be like, is he a high school girl? Because he had a uniform on. Yeah. Then you realize she was in the dean's office, and they had she was in the dorms and stuff. And was like, okay, so she, she's at least of age. But it's just like this grown ass man is now in love with this fresh college student. Like, and she's not even she's not even she's brand new to the planet. Like, yeah, what is happening? Yeah, what is that? Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. So uh, where you, where are you gonna where are you gonna rate this movie? Uh. I give it a 2.5 because 2. 5. the things I did like about it, uh, I liked the the set pieces of the movie. I okay. liked how they tried to make it look different, but yet still like just weird and, and alien and like it had a lot of different things because of the woman when she was a magician and she lived in like a fun house. Oh, who's that? Loki, Loki don't like it. Loki don't like this movie. Yeah, she's screaming. So, right like, next to the mic. <laughs> she don't like it. Trying to give her input too. Like, yeah. Hey. Uh, but like, yeah, it, it, it tried to do different things. It, yeah. it was, you could feel it was trying to live in the same vein as Superman. Yeah. But it was also like trying to do something different. And, and I'll give it credit, you know, you empowering female heroes, do what you got to do. I yeah. said I gave one big credit over Superman. And that was the fact that her hair changed changed color completely when she changed from her alter ego to yeah. Supergirl. Like, yeah. I I can't I can't fault that. Like, dude, she looks completely not completely different, but she looks like a different person. So, like, all right. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so, we're gonna put this. You're gonna put it behind Lone Ranger or before it? Mm-hmm. I put it behind Lone Ranger. Behind. Okay. Put it behind. Super girl. Um, I'm gonna give it a two. Mm-hmm. I'll give it a two. Um, it just felt like it, I I I think it dragged. It it just dragged too long for me to be keep interest in the movie. I wanted. Um, I give credit for it. For, again, like the, the whole like changing identity and stuff like that. I did like the beginning scene when she like the dudes were trying to go up on her and she like that. And she just. Oh, yeah, I thought that was a funny scene. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a funny scene, but the rest of the movie, it, it kind of dragged. It kind of had a Snow White kind of storyline in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snow White. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was not the greatest. Um, I think we're gonna have a lot more better ones in this list, and it'll go right behind Lone Ranger at number two. Condom Man still sucks, so that's gonna be the last place Her. right now. So right now, um, my movies are Superman 2, Flash Gordon, uh, Superman 1, Superman 3, The Lone Ranger, uh, Supergirl, and Condor Man. Yours is pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much the same. <laughs> no, yours is, uh, your number two is Superman, and three is Flash Gordon. That's the difference. Yeah. Uh, n- next movie on our list, and I'm actually looking forward to this one, uh, Toxic Avenger. Yes, me too. Me too. Um, so yeah, we'll be back for Toxic Avenger. After that, be Sheena, the Queen of the Jungle, Weird Science, and then uh, the, another one I'm looking forward to is Howard the Duck. Oh man, that's good. <laughs> I love Howard the Duck. So that's those good. are uh, our superhero comic book movies for two decades. Um, that's our review for some girl. Um, yeah, Toxic Avenger next week. Yeah, definitely already already know it's going to be a much better movie, so there's yeah. that. Um, um, that's that, right? Yeah, that's about this it. Out. You can wrap uh, this up. Thank you for listening to another episode of the It Gets Better Elsewhere podcast. Uh, make sure you follow us anywhere and everywhere, Red Cycle Inc. That is YouTube. That is SoundCloud. That is Spotify. Uh, that is Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram. And we got a WordPress. We got Merc. Uh, follow me on all social media: Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, uh, 
YouTube, Twitch TV, and SoundCloud all Mark with the Mic. Follow the Facebook pages, the Red Tech Link, and the Fe- and the Wrestling Bible page. Follow all our other podcasts. We have it gets better as rare uh, weekly. We have to get the Wrestling Bible weekly. We have uh, the Morphin Cast, our Shell Shock, the Game of Rage, and not a Trekkie all monthly cast. Um, uh, stay tuned. We have a lot of new content for you soon. Uh, also, follow the Jinkies. You know what? He's still not supposed to have them sandwiches, but he's still chasing them. Yeah, he's in the Hell in the Cell with the Undertaker. Okay, he took Dear Lord Long sandwich. Player. I got bad news for you, player. <laughs> yeah, man. You done messed up. You done messed up. You Hell done in it now. <laughs> you done made a big mistake. Oh, he's getting big evil taken, too. That's not cool. Oh, that's not cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all he is. That's just him in real life. He's yeah. mad. Yeah, he's mad. All right. Look, he's so fine. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>